Hey guys, Bridget here. In this video, I want to share with you an amazing plugin which is going to enable you to copy your Figma websites directly into Webflow in a responsive manner. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Now we're going to use uh, as an example, this uh, beautiful website template uh, provided by Brex, uh, which uh, you can find uh, on the Figma community. So simply search for Brex uh, Figma to Webflow kit and uh, you're going to find it. And uh, as you can see, one thing that uh, uh, it's very important to notice uh, right away is that everything is created utilizing uh, the auto layout. Now, why this uh, is crucial if uh, you want uh, to work uh, with uh, this plugin is uh, because auto layout is actually mimicking uh, and uh, is quite parallel to the dynamics uh, that go on when it comes to the uh, flexbox uh, in uh, webflow so it's uh, really important to have everything uh, arranged in auto layout so for example if we have a look at the header you can see how this is nested within uh, different auto layouts and then uh, over here we have uh, the main uh, two containers which are the SAS uh, logo and uh, the navbar on the right uh, and uh, the auto layout uh, is set in a way that is going to work well when it comes to the responsiveness uh, in a uh, webflow so if you actually go ahead uh, and uh, try to resize this you can see what i mean so let's jump right into the plugin i'm going to select the uh, header one and uh, I'm going to search uh, under the plugin for Figma to Webflow. And you're going to find it uh, right here. Now, at the moment that uh, this loads up, uh, you're going to need to connect uh, your site. So there's going to be a mini um, introduction uh, where they're going to ask you at the very end to connect uh, to your Webflow account. So just do that, uh, sign up uh, or sign in. And uh, after that, you're going to be able to view this uh, uh, section right here, which uh, in essence uh, is going to require you to select uh, the specific uh, section that you want to copy. And uh, you need to select uh, the site that you want to paste it to. Then over here, there's uh, uh, one of two questions. Essentially, what is the HTML tag that uh, you want the current selection to have? So we're simply going to go with div, but you can also go with section. Uh, this one's specific for links. So most of the times you're going to deal with uh, div or sections. And uh, you also have uh, a responsive option. Now this, uh, as you can see here from uh, this toggle, is uh, specify which uh, breakpoint size you want this selected auto layout to shift to vertical stack. Now in this case, we're not going to really uh, worry that much about it because <clears throat> we're going to manually set it up afterwards. But uh, at that point, uh, um, you can so you can just leave it to non-responsive. So simply click on copy to Webflow, and as you can see, it's going to do its magic in a very short amount of time. I'm back on my website and uh, if, for example, I go back, uh, I can open up the navigator, so we select the body and paste it with command plus uh, V, I believe in uh, Windows is control plus V. And uh, just like magic, we have our component. Now, if you have a look at it, you can see that we have this uh, main uh, containing div, then there is a section within uh, the navbar container and everything else is exactly as it is in Figma. So you remember that alignment uh, space between that we had in Figma? That's exactly how the Flexbox is behaving right here. So it's uh, very similar or actually identical. It's just uh, bringing auto layout uh, to Flexbox. Uh, so quite useful. And then uh, one note is uh, in, in this specific case, uh, uh, you can see even how this is working uh, in uh, responsiveness. Of course, maybe you want to adjust these uh, depending on how uh, the background is going to be, but uh, that uh, is uh, something that uh, is quite remarkable if you ask me. And if we go to uh, Figma to Webflow again by selecting this uh, section right here below and I say copy to Webflow, you can see how we can easily just go here back on Webflow, 
select the, just be sure that we're selecting the body. And that we have the new section right here, which again, it's working uh, in responsiveness. You need to tweak this, uh, this image a bit, uh, or maybe that is your desired outcome. But you can see how we can literally go through this site. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, of course, really important to have the auto layout structure well, because otherwise uh, that is uh, where the issues come in and where you're going to spend more time than what you're going to actually save uh, by utilizing this plugin. But overall, very simple, very straightforward. And um, also another thing that I wanted to mention about this plugin is that you don't necessarily need to start from scratch when you're, whenever you're creating a layout. And uh, also I realize that, especially for some of you who maybe aren't as experienced with uh, uh, HTML, CSS, uh, it's uh, going to be a, a bit harder to understand which is going to be the perfect uh, uh, way to structure your sections from a responsive standpoint, especially. So uh, Webflow actually uh, went uh, towards and created all sorts of different components that you can utilize. So see that I'm creating a website from scratch in Figma. I can simply go ahead and uh, utilize these components, which uh, are essentially already optimized and structured in the perfect way for you to then export them into the actual website uh, on Webflow. So very easy. And of course, you're going to need to, to organize these uh, as you wish. But uh, this uh, is actually going to, to help you quite a bit in uh, saving time and uh, also learning. So you can even go here and say that you wanted to create a, a section similar to this one, you can actually see what is the ideal way of uh, creating and setting up this, um, this section. And uh, of course, you can always copy it to the Webflow. So over here, preparing the assets, I can go back and uh, I can add it here in the body. You can see how this is uh, going to work uh, perfectly fine uh, right away. Maybe the logos need a little bit of more padding, but you see the gist of it. It's going to be pretty straightforward. And uh, there's also another um, really cool feature, which is the design system sync, which uh, is going to enable you to sync uh, uh, the website uh, with uh, the design system Figma, which uh, is an uh, area that um, is going to be explored in a future video. And uh, on top of that, uh, also some uh, useful elements uh, here under this uh, right uh, side menu. You can op open the Webflow dashboard uh, directly from here. And uh, also a quick snippet to copy all text and color styles, copy text styles and also copy the color styles. And uh, there's also the plugin uh, setting uh, plus help and feedback. So this is going to be useful, the settings uh, for the class prefix. So as you can see written here, every Figma node name uh, will be converted into a CSS class in Webflow. So adding a prefix uh, uh, gives you context uh, on the class origin. So you can actually add custom prefixes like you know, custom class prefix Figma, uh, or, you know, whatever you desire really. And then uh, you can also select uh, the text size unit, which uh, is, uh, as described here, choose if you want to import text nodes with rem or pixel values, as well as uh, you can choose the number variables unit. So choose the unit you want to sync for your number variables. So again, you can go with pixels or RAM for both. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So start exploring this uh, plugin today. I'm uh, quite uh, enthusiastic about it. Although there are personally some things which uh, I would uh, uh, be cautious with. Uh, and that is one of the reasons why I actually don't use it much these days, but uh, we're probably going to discuss it in a future video. Uh, just to give you a heads up though, it's uh, really important uh, to have a clean uh, 
Figma file whenever you're creating uh, these uh, translations because uh, one of the main issues with uh, plugins uh, that I used in the past is uh, uh, first of all the code quality, the code structure and uh, also I'm a big fan of utilizing uh, client first uh, from FinSuite so it's uh, as far as I'm aware there isn't uh, a direct connection with client first so what I usually do for clients is actually utilizing uh, client first and then I use either some components libraries or I create uh, components directly in Webflow from my Figma documents uh, uh, so everything is uh, is custom but um, I just wanted to give you a heads up on that because uh, I don't want people to just blindly using what feels like uh, the easiest solution without uh, having uh, considerations from uh, the longer longevity and uh, the functionality part of a project for a client in uh, the long term. So keep this in mind, it's definitely a great tool and uh, uh, I'm excited about what is up for the future because I see this as just the beginning. So have a look at this tool and uh, I'll see you in the very next video.